Greetings, dapperlings, and welcome back to Cosmetia, where in today's episode, I bring it back to a slightly modified fleet. Now, it's a little bit more than the slight modifications that you're probably used to. That is that I quite often paint the ships in between episodes, but this one's a little bit more than that, as you can probably tell most clearly by the Hercules. The Hercules is both the largest and the smallest change in uh, the fleet. Uh, some of you may have noticed, uh, those of you who got the notification from uh, YouTube or on Twitter, that I was streaming last night and I decided to stream some behind the scenes footage. As there's quite a few people who've been asking me, you know, what goes into designing the ships, what goes into especially the painting of the ships. So we had a solid nine hour stream of primarily redesigning, painting and a little bit of combat testing. Now, we'll start with the Hercules again because it's the, both the biggest and the smallest change. It is easily doubled in size. Well, I mean, maybe not quite double, but uh, not far off it, I would say. This has largely been storage, though. So that's what I mean by the smallest change. It's not really a functional change. Still, the ship has grown enormously. It now boasts six hyper jump drives to help it move from place to place. It is largely the same ship in terms of its functional components. However, you may notice that we now have the ability to produce missiles, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, I'm actually really, really happy with the Hercules uh, new paint design, especially the the four storage bays. Uh, that is the, the, the forward storage bays. I really do think that they look quite nice. Next, we moved on to the Dapper One, the Scarab. Now, I'm not completely married to this uh, this paint at the moment. I think we may be changing that in the future once I become inspired to something else. But I think this is uh, this is good enough for now. Now you can probably already see one of the the larger changes, and that is the movement of the ion beam emitters, as well as the general expansion of our thruster clusters. Finally. The most important, and probably the most significant, but also in some ways the smallest redesign, uh, is the Fire Ant. The humble Fire Ant, which you can now see. After so many comments urging me to look at setting up a missile ship, I finally acquiesced and decided to turn the Fire Ant into a missiles platform, at least for now as a test. In part, this is because I feel that a missiles platform will feel the pinch of a, of a low crew complement, the least of all of the, the types of combat ships. In large part, because a missiles platform is by design meant to engage from quite far away and out of harm's reach. This will generally be engaging from about the same range as the fire as the uh, scarab. Sorry, it depends a little bit on what types of missiles we're equipped with, and we can make that choice in between engagements and change out the ammo that we're loading it with. Now, I've also received quite a few comments uh, asking me to cut out less building. Uh, unfortunately, that is not going to be the case with this episode. However, as all of this was done on stream, there are a couple of ways that you can see the the full uncut, unedited content. The obvious one will be to uh, check out my second channel, Avac After Hours. The links are always in the video description down below, where the VODs cut up into episodic bite-sized chunks. Well, I say bite-sized, they're still going to be like 45 minutes long. Uh, will be going up over the next couple of days. The other option is to actually check out my Twitch channel and watch the VODs there. Now, they are a bit lower uh, quality, especially graphically, just because of the bitrate limitations on Twitch. So if you do have the patience, then I do recommend you instead check them out over on Avac After Hours. But since even those who don't have time to check out the VODs are almost certainly not going to be satisfied with just a, hey, I did this uh, description of the changes, let's go ahead and try and condense down the four or so hours worth of redesign into something a little bit more manageable, shall we? Starting with the the Scarab. We start off with a big redesign to the thruster cluster for the Scarab, which is initially the only real goal for the Scarab's redesign. Primarily, I wanted to add in an extra booster rocket, but that gradually changes f into more of a significant overhaul as we switch from using smaller thrusters to the largest we can fit into any available space. This is because I learned that there isn't really a uh, ramp up curve for the engines. It's simply a linear increase from no thrust to its maximum thrust which means that even the larger thruster 
at its the very beginning of its burn time is still objectively better than the next thruster down so there's re no reason to use the smaller thrusters except in the in the rear edge case where there does seem to be a a flaw to the amount of thrust that the larger thrusters will produce which means very small maneuvers the the big thrusters may over adjust so do keep that in mind Next, after having played around with some possibilities with ion beams earlier in the stream, by the way, there are some crazy things you can do with them, we take a fresh look at the current ion beam configuration in the Scarab and decide to make a rather big change by turning one of the ion beam emitters 90 degrees to the side. That frees up some extra space at the front of the craft around the defensive systems, as well as allowing us to feed energy into the topmost emitter a little bit more efficiently. Finally, we set to using the new space in the top to create isolated modules within the ship for each arm housing a shield and flak battery, at least partially just so that I can experiment with isolated modules for the uh, use in future designs. But as each wing is now self-contained, they each need their own bunks for crew to sleep, reactors to power the shields and thrusters, and additionally, to capitalize on the fact that sulfur is not explosive while stores of ammo very much are, I choose to not only build a dedicated ammo factory for each flak battery, but instead I build two, which in turn benefit from the production speed adjacency bonuses, which means that even in the middle of battle, the ammo factories will be able to slightly outproduce the ammo consumption rate of the flak weapons firing constantly. So there's no longer any reason to store ammo near the flak batteries. I simply store the sulfur and make the ammo on the fly. And now onto the fire ant. The first place we started with the fire ant is of course, we looked for a way to incorporate shields into the design. Whilst not strictly necessary, I did want to give it some security should the ship become tangled in a larger engagement, especially if an enemy approached once we were already engaged with someone from a direction that I wasn't expecting. But after numerous attempts to orient the shields and experimenting with how we could get the shield domes to protect the ship, or not in some cases, I really didn't want some sort of vulnerable line straight down the middle, as I have exploited with the scarab so many times before, I finally settle on keeping things simple and instead just using a lot of armor to skew the front of the craft instead of trying to fit in shields. Also, this pulls down the, the need for energy hauling. Next, we designed an expanded thruster cluster to allow both forward and reverse thrust. Though I do keep some reverse thrusters on the front of the ship. I just feel that's going to be better for turning, if nothing else, since those will be on, on more of the extreme uh, ends of the ship rather than having everything kind of clustered around the center of mass, which has been a problem up to now. This required some compromises though on where I located the reactor and the missile systems to ensure that the route to the engine room wouldn't be too long for our transporters since we've already seen that that can radically impact how efficient they are at getting energy around the ship. This included briefly flirting with the idea of a walkway roundabout which I'm going to say I'm still kind of uh, kind of on on board for it. Just I'm going to need to find the right place to use it. But uh, for now, that that wasn't uh, this wasn't it. But we'll be keeping keeping our eye open for an opportunity to create a walkway roundabout in the future. Finally, we came to the task of finding the best position for the missile launchers themselves. While I wanted to have the missile launching forward to minimize the need for guidance to course correct the missiles as they approach the target and also to allow them to reach the target a little bit faster, I did eventually decide that rear-facing launchers would be best. While less efficient in delivering their payload to the target, they do allow for significantly better defenses. Specifically, they don't require any exposed weapon systems on the front of the ship which is something that I wouldn't mind as much if we had shields to protect them, but given that we're going for an all-armor approach, this seemed like the safest choice. And with all of that said and done, there you go. You're nice and caught up now. Again, if you do want to see the uh, full uncut uh, rambly version of this, it was about nine hours worth of streaming. The majority of that was spent on the painting. So if you have particular interest in how I, I go about painting the ships, then checking out the uh, stream VODs is probably the best way for you to get a, a complete uh, glimpse into the inner workings of my mind as I'm going through the design process and deciding how I'm going to use colors and, and the shadows to create shapes, so on and so forth. But with all of that done, let's get down to today's shenanigans. And I have something very particular 
in mind. All right, we are currently heading in towards a pirate base, but not just any old pirate base. This pirate base is a little bit of a special one as it is a uh, difficulty nine, which means we are going to be able to get 99 fame out of this, assuming, you know, we don't blow up. Uh, that may be a big assumption considering the level of difficulty, but we are going to give it our best shot. Now, I would much prefer it if the enemy came to me and I could engage at uh, extreme range. Let's see if we can't make that happen. Let's have a look at what kind of ships are protecting it. Heavily shielded ion beams. Okay, so uh, we're going to be fighting things that at least have the same sort of range as we do. Uh, let's tuck down over here. This is going to be extremely important for the fire ant then. The fire ant's long range EMP is going to come in clutch. But yes, they all have shielded ion beam emitters, dual shielded ion beam, beam emitters, and nuclear weapons. Right. Okay, so I'm going to want the fire, uh, the scarab to get involved straight away. I'm going to let the fire ant move down a little bit more. But at this point, I want the fire ant to try and shut down the shields. We are going to try and pop the nuke missile launchers first and foremost. Now, both ships are told to uh, engage at range. So hopefully this should be okay. Missiles are away. One, oh, thank goodness it just cleared. Right, at this point, I want to make sure that we're keeping range. You've got decent thrust, but your nuke missiles do have a very, very short range compared to our ordnance. So as long as we can maintain distance, we should be okay. Now I'm a little worried about the fire ant about this, but the fire ant does come with boosters. So let's engage those and get right back. The scarab seems to be doing okay. The uh, EMP missiles have missed their targets. Unfortunately, the fire ant is going to back up straight into some rocks, which is ultra bad, but pop. Okay, so we have managed to take out one of the nukes. That was just the ion beam wearing its way through. Perfect. Let's uh, go for the second nuke. Then after that, we more or less want to just barrel down one side at a time if we can. We really don't want to have to play around with this. Uh, the Dapper 3, the Fire Ant, let's go for... Well, honestly, if we can just get the uh, shield systems taken out... Are, are you really just stuck over there, my lord? And the bridge has gone down. That is not great. We do kind of need you to uh, get that back online, peeps. Please and thanks. Oh, you managed to get one hit with the EMP. The uh, ion beams did come online. The nuke is away. All right. Need you over here. So badly, it's untrue. Need you there. Just maneuver. Put the, the asteroid between you and the nuke. Nukes are dumb fire weapons. If you simply are not where they were aiming when they were launched, then you're fine. Uh, let's uh, continue blasting through there. We have got the faster ship here. I don't think we're going to be able to move in time. And boom. Big explosion there. We just lost one of... Well, actually, no. It was pure armor that we lost. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's uh, already working to our advantage then in that case. Uh, right. Let's see if we can't just burrow through. Now, Fire Ant. What happened there? Why did the, the bridge crew go down? I'm noticing operators having to, to load this up. Well, that is a bit of a problem. And that is because it looks like we have not got porters set up properly. That is very much my bad. Uh, let's get those porters set up. We've got uh, six. Yeah, we've, we've easily got enough operators that they should be running that. For some reason, that got overwritten. That should have been the porters role. We've gone for operators, energy supplies, and porters at this point. We no longer have any kind of energy haulers, and that is probably why that was going right, awry, because operators were leaving in order to do hauling tasks. But the main threat in this fleet is gone, and an EMP missile is heading in, probably going to shut down their thrusters. Perfect. Right. Dapple 1, can you take out the thrusters? Actually, can you go for the cockpit now that it has been presented to you? Uh, unfortunate bit of shrapnel there getting in the way, but that's fine. Uh, still, we lost our opportunity there. Sad to say. Right. Well, Fire Ant, can I get you to engage? Let's see. We may be able to do it. Again, we kind of want to take out the bridge section if we can. 
Right, Fire Ant, need you to not be in front of this thing. So how about we instead position ourselves between it and this asteroid? That way, if it brings online its uh, ion beams, then it shouldn't be too much of a threat. We've easily got the, the speed uh, victory here. It is not faster than we are. So, oh, then there's the second one coming in sneakily like. All right, Scarab. Time again to take out the nukes first. Once more, you are the faster ship, but I'm going to very much need you to immediately burst your reverse boosters. Get back right now. They are engaging. They will cut through those shields eventually, but we should be able to outrange them. Especially if they present such a juicy target there. Can you go for the cockpit instead? If they are going to let us hit the cockpit straight away, oh my lord. Oh, you scallywag. Just managed to uh, manoeuvre out of the, the way there. Right. How much will it cost to repair? A little bit more than we've got right here, which is a shame. Uh, I can always bring in the Dapper 2 to help out, though. Or alternatively, just uh, scavenge some of these wrecks. And we might do that rather than bringing in the Dapper 2. That being said, what was it that we were missing again? We are missing 12 hypercalls. There's a... Uh, it's unknown if I'm going to be able to get that from salvage. Still, we can definitely try. We'll bring in the Scarab. Scarab took a little bit of damage, but it's absolutely negligible. And honestly, oh, I thought you were gone. No, you were the other one. I took my eyes off the prize there, and that is entirely my fault. Damn it. All right. Well, let's uh, get the EMPs away. And hope for the best. Try and maneuver yourself. Now, this is the lovely thing about missiles, is I don't need to worry too much about them in regards to uh, positioning. I can just put myself behind something and the missiles will fan out around it. That being said, you can't take much of a hit there. So I do need you to uh, tuck away. Oh, that missile's probably going to plonk into the back. No, we're okay. The disruptors are coming in, though. This might be quite bad for the fire ant, if I'm perfectly honest. The nukes are away, and they are heading down for the scarab. That was a solid blow on two shield systems, and now the ions are just wrecking face. But we managed to get the EMP in there. Scarab, go ahead and activate your boosters. Should have been activating those a little while ago, honestly. All right, now that they've lost uh, rotation control because the bridge is down, Let's try and do some real damage with this. Let's capitalize on the fact that they are currently disabled. Pop that nuke launcher, please, and indeed, thank you. Go straight through if you're able. If not, just go for the bridge. If you can make that happen, would be grand. I believe you're probably going to be aiming for the Dapper 3. No, you are not. Okay, you're just trying to get back. Well, I mean, that's uh, okay with me for now. We should be able to call you. And I think we just did. Have they got another bridge? Or is, are they dead in the water now? Yep, they're dead in the water. All right, well, that was a bit of an interesting engagement, to be certain. Going to need to bring the Dapper 2 over, though. Uh, I think we're going to need the repairs and supplies in there. Also, we're going to need a, a re... Uh, restock of ammo for the fire run. That was not the best engagement by a fairly large margin, but uh, still, it wasn't the worst either, since we haven't completely died. But we do need 229 steel plates to repair the scarab after those two nuke blasts. That being said, incredibly, incredibly shocked that two nuke blasts, thankfully they did land on shields, basically. One there, one there. But the damage that passed through the shield still kind of wrecked things. Most of the stuff that hasn't exploded is hanging on by a thread. I don't believe there's any kind of uh, system, uh, like, uh, performance based on their overall health. But uh, if there were, then I imagine that fight would have gone very differently because those thrusters should basically be gouting flame and reaction mass every which way. Right, I'm going to patch up the fleet, and then we're going to take on the base now that it's lost its defenders. See you in a few moments.
All right, the Dapper 2 is currently uh, taking care of some more mining, having already uh, cut up the enemy ships. We got a good haul out of those ships because, it, for the most part, their, their uh, actual hulls were relatively undamaged and the juicy bits like the ion beam emitters uh, were ripe for the salvage. We more or less surgically struck two of them, just taking out their cockpits. We did explode the nukes, so uh, we didn't get as many nuclear missile parts back, but we're not really using nuclear missiles. Apart. And I don't even think we could on a diagonal ship because they are dumb fire. We would have to aim the ship in the right way, but maybe that's uh, an idea for a drone in the future. But we have got a missile vessel over here, so let's uh, go ahead and take that out. We're going to go the good old-fashioned way and just uh, take the, the uh, scab here and just pop that as we can. But, ooh, missiles are already away. Interesting. Now, there... Missile systems do have a great deal of range. Actually, outperforming my uh, the the Scarab's main weapon systems. But thankfully, our flak system is superior. Now there is a destroyed vessel over here, so someone else has already tried to pop this place. Easiest way to get you would probably be to burrow through the major shields there. As long as we do not approach. We should be okay. Namely, the nukes. The nukes are the biggest threat. The EMP missiles, I mean, they take a while to reload. They probably got a, quite a, a lot of availability. We could pop our way through the, the nuke missiles, or we could back off. And I think I would prefer to back off right now. Let's just draw back. And furthermore, draw back without changing heading. So for this, just activate your boosters and pull right back. There we go. From here, they shouldn't re-engage. And the reason why we wanted to do that very carefully is because I didn't want to turn my flak away from the incoming missiles. Right, let's get around to about here. Oh, they have decided to, uh, to turn. They have locked on. Interesting. That's going to pose a bit more of a problem for me to get in there, then. Unless... No, they are still tracking me. Well, that's actually a bit of a, a, bit of a surprise, but okay. Uh, right, let's try and pop this one as well. Now, we can, of course, use the Fire Ant to EMP the station. And we might try that. Because it is going to point itself towards... Now, I've uh, during the stream, quite a few people asked, can my Ion Beam take out missiles? No, it can't. Well, we've seen it happen a couple of times that the Ion Beam just raked across missiles just by chance. Did not destroy the missiles in any way. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not going to be a thing we can do. However, what I can do... I think that's a little bit too deeply burrowed in there for me to be able to get an EMP to hit it. Uh, ah, this is why it's tracking me. It's got a sensor. Fair enough. Let's get the fire ant up and around. In fact, let's get the fire ant about there. We'll see what we can do. We don't really want the fire ant to approach too much, in fact. So I'll allow it to just get close, and then we will scooch it back a bit. There we go. We're just going to dig through to the nukes, explode them. Hopefully the uh, chain reactions will allow us to very quickly take out the uh, EMP launches. Really? It's bloody scrap. Ah, uh, my lord. But still, attacking from this far away is proving to be brilliant for us. Let's go ahead and get the fire ant right behind the scarab. I would like it to move in formation, please. There we go. And you can, from the scarab, just be about there, I think. You keep pace. But I would also like you to target enemy systems. Is there anything I can hit in particular? Attack another ship can also be used to attack your own ships. I don't need to attack the scarab, obviously. Uh... Try and go for... Well, honestly, the Scarab is probably going to be able to just dig straight through. With bypassing all of these shields entirely. It's only if it turns itself to face us is it going to be a problem. Alright, well, I'll keep the Scarab just behind then. But uh, let's have it just slowly edge forward. What I will do instead is I'm going to tell the weapon systems on the Fire Ant. Instead of targeting specific subsystems and, and what I tell it to target, fire it will. If you've got a target, you can launch those those missiles. There they go. They're smart enough to try and work their way. Wow. Is this coming towards me? I think it might be. Uh, all right. Well, uh, let's continue digging through. 
I think the fire ant might, uh, sorry, the scarab might need to edge a little bit further forward. It seems we're just out of range. Okay, well, let's go for the central system then and draw right back to about there. Make sure that we're within range of it. There we go. That's what we needed. We were a little bit too far out of range, unfortunately. But there's very little that this base can do. It's a shame that we're going to have to lose so much of the base in order to get this to happen, but I mean, it's better than, than uh, getting damaged. But look, <laughs> that large reactor. Look at all the dead people. <laughs> wow. And so many alive people. Well, they're going to be dead soon anyway. Uh, no, I'm not going to kill them. I'm just not going to pick them up. <laughs> You know, they're on their own. If they can manage to, you know, hobble together some sort of uh, life raft out of the remains of this station, well done them. They have earned their their survival. We're just, we're just helping to encourage nature to train a more robust and technically proficient human. We're doing our part. However, there are quite a few parts, speaking of, around here that I would very much like to have in the Hercules' belly. So, give me a second, and then we're going to go and hand in this quest. And, oh my lord, we're going to get crew! This is the best day. And with that done, we are ready to jump back and hand in this quest. Look at the contents of the Hercules. The Hercules is a massive ship. And it's almost as tall as you can make ships, or at least that I've seen you can make. I actually had to start uh, changing the way I was building because I was too close to the border. The Hercules is a very big boy. <laughs> Still got plenty of room laterally, but the Hercules is about as long of, of a ship as you can make. With a perhaps there are different ways to expand that. Do let me know in the in the comments actually if there is a way to make even larger ships than this. But uh, to be fair, already the Hercules is very ungainly as it is. But look at the cargo space. This is what we get for stripping down a station that's full of missiles that we now care about. But what we care about the most his crew. So let's uh, have the entire fleet hop back. This should not take them very long at all. And there they go. Uh, is the Hercules on its way? Hercules? Are you are you almost there? Yeah. <laughs> it's got an awful lot of drives that it needs to load. And very few people to load them, which is about to be fixed. Right, let's have a quick chat. Hello! I have been looking forward to this moment, uh, because we have been fame-locked for so long. However, I was told uh, in the comments and on the stream that it is possible for you to change this, the ratio of fame to the amount of crew that you can you can hire. However, that has to be selected at game start. It's basically a difficulty modifier, which makes sense in a lot of ways. Turn that in and destroy pirate base 99 fame. Oh my lord. I will happily accept that gold delivery. Do I have gold? I do have gold. Uh, do I have enriched uranium? I do have enriched uranium. So I need to sell six enriched uranium and ten gold. Uh, honestly, the gold is worth more to me. Uh, the enriched uranium, though, uh, actually also worth more to me. Sorry, you're not going to get those off me. Uh, but that being said, I could, uh, I could dump uh, a few things, like mine parts don't really care about those at this point and nuclear missile components not really using nukes that being said i don't want to get rid of all of them i will keep a solid 100 nuclear missile parts but the rest can be sold uh, let's have a look through here we've got a very very healthy stockpile of resources so uh, we're going to say yes to all of that but most importantly of all we're going to hire 15 new crew make it so I'm more excited about that than anything else right now. Uh, let's have the Hercules scoot a little bit closer, shall we? Just to make the uh, trip for its new crew that much easier. Oh, we are so desperately in need of this crew. All right, they're easily going to be able to help us uh, shift some things out, but I'm going to have to make sure that they've got the right bunks at this point. We've got a lot of crew potential on this ship. The important ones are, of course, the energy supplier bunks. The and in the, at this point, I, I could really just do away with this and instead just have one massive reactor in the middle. There is a point though where the question is is that actually helping me out at all? I could equally put just put a uh, put a engine room on either side and just have that fed from the main reactor. Might not be a bad move. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead. It's it's been a while, it's been a while coming. 
So, we're going to want mirror mode on, uh, which it is, and it is down the middle. Perfect. Let's grab this whole section. I'm going to cut, and we're going to move it back a little bit. We, of course, want an engine room. Now, this is going to increase the amount of uh, crew, the, the operators that we're going to want, so I'm probably going to have to change that up a little bit. That being said, I could have the operators simply bunk next to where they're going to work. There is something pleasing about that. In terms of operators, we need uh, one, two, uh, that is five. We've got... Uh, we've got two engine rooms up there, so that's an extra six, so we're up to 11. In total, we will need a solid 15. And in total here, we've got 24. No, this, uh, is this just six or is it 12? No, it's, it's, sorry, it's, it's, uh, six. My bad there. So, we've only got 12. Ah, uh, sure. We can easily drop down two extra bunks. In fact, we can pop the bunks down here rather than have them over on the other side. That will allow the operators to all come from the middle and that'll uh, keep things nice and easy for us. Okay then, oops, I didn't mean to grab you. Sorry about that. Now, as for our energy, I would like... We could go for boosters. Just in case we need to get somewhere fast. That's definitely an option. Uh... Sure. I don't know if we'll ever use these boosters, but we can definitely have them as uh, an emergency get out of somewhere quick button. There we go. We're going to go for very large thrusters at this point. Right, we're not going to need this. We will run off the main reactor instead. And all we need that. Let's bring all of this down. Now, I could have some nice big lateral thrusters. And that is very tempting. But instead, I'm going to go for much the same design as I've got on the Scarab, if I'm honest. If we uh, pop this in there, and this is going to give us a nice a little, little bit of movement. In fact, we won't need these bunks anymore either, because we're going to be relying on the supply coming from over there. So we can do away with those bunks. And if we do that, I could move this whole assembly back by one, which I think I would like to do. So let's go ahead and uh, shunt down. Can I just grab you? Uh, oh, I'm on the select tool. Uh, we're going to shunt these down a little bit. That's fine. That's the only one I need to move. And we're going to pull this whole rig down by one. There we go. Get the boost thrusters right next to the area here. Pull all of this down. That way this is proud a little bit. And the reason why I want that to be proud is because I want a walkway. I want a corridor coming out here. That way I can have some more point defense. One of the things that we actually got to see was just how important the point defense was on the Scarab. When missiles went past it, which we're starting to see missiles a lot now. Having just an array of just regular point defense on each, each side, purely set up as, as defensive uh, weapons. Uh, not weapons, sorry, but uh, purely for defense was absolutely clutch. They can lay down a ridiculous amount of fire when a missile goes past, and it was it was genuinely the, the thing that was keeping us going sometimes. So uh, I think we are going to copy that over, and we'll want something like this, just to give it a nice shape to it as well. That one then will be a little bit obscured, which is a shame. However, I don't mind too much about having the array up there for defense will be a little bit more useful to me, I think, ultimately. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll all look nice. I'm going to have to do some more painting. I've, I've, I, I'm I've, going to be honest, as much as it takes me like four or five hours to do the painting, especially if I'm doing all of the ships at the same time, if we've switched out a the theme, I actually find it incredibly cathartic. It's a little bit of a joy at the end of a recording session. There we go. All right. That has given us some really, really nice thruster clusters. Now we've got, uh, maybe pop down a little bit of a uh, a fire extinguisher around here. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. We will allow for the doors into the various thrusters. We're just not going to need them, generally speaking. But they are there in case we need to put out fire. Now, the big question is, how are we going to make this efficient? Well. The honest answer is, using these, uh, we found that these were fantastically efficient on the Scarab. 
if we just go straight down the line, like so. We'll have two doors. I know this means that the fire can spread a little bit easier, but people will exit down there, go straight down and come straight back along. They can swap around as need be. I think maybe having a, uh, a capacitor or possibly even a storage for the Hyperium around the Hyperjump calls would be useful. As we've seen, the Hercules does not jump out of anywhere fast, but I think this will probably work well for us. But there we go. The Hercules finally has a pretty chonking great crew. Uh, well, I say chonking great crew. Uh, it's got exactly 37 out of the 68 that I want in there. But it's a uh, big upgrade over what we used to have. Now, I've got a couple more quests to do around here. And a few more that I can simply hand in right away. But uh, I think we're more or less done with this system for now. What we're going to want to do at this point is decide which new system we're going to go and investigate. And uh, as much as I want to err on the side of caution, we need, we desperately need more crew. So I think Vem, uh, Vemex is where we're going next. So we're going to plot that hyper jump course. We've easily got the materials to make the jump. And we're going to jump over there. Now, don't worry, I will eventually come back and clear out these systems of all the various quests. It's just that I don't need the money right now, and that's more or less all they're going to give me. There's going to be a little bit of uh, cash as well, but really not much. Uh, we can just hyper jump down here. Do I have enough uh, fuel with us? Yes, the Hercules has got 120 in stock. So the Hercules can just refuel the other ships once we get there. This will save us a load of time. But to come back to my original point, we will come back and clear out the system. I'll either do it off camera or perhaps it'll be uh, another thing for another stream. Uh, ideally one where I'm not redesigning the entire fleet because, again, that took nine hours. <laughs> my lord. Right, let's uh, go ahead and jump out. Let's see how long it takes them all to charge up. Again, Scarab there, much, much faster. Now we're also... Oh, interesting. The Scarab was a little bit behind the Fire Ant this time. Very interesting indeed, but uh, the the Hercules taking a long time to spin up those hyperdrives takes a long time for the crew to load them up with uh, energy. But with that, let's go to pastures new. Let's see what. Ooh, I like the background already. Big fan of this background. All right, let's uh, poke out and see what we're gonna find. There should be an enemy down here, and I would love to see what kind of enemy it's gonna be. As soon as I have found a station that I can jump to, in fact, I can already jump to it, so you go ahead and make your way down there whilst the Scarab and the Fire Ant uh, make their introductions to the locals. Let's find out what you are. This is a much higher threat system, so I'm expecting great things. Four flat guns and a lot of forward thrust. Okay, yeah, I accept. This is actually going to be a bit of an interesting one. Let's try and just take out your weapon systems ASAP. I would like you to veer off if we could. Let's have you just slide over to the side. Out of the way. But you can engage as soon as you want. Though I do realize I haven't actually loaded you up. That would have been wise of me, wouldn't it? I activate boosters. And I think we're actually going to activate the boosters on the... Uh, the Fire Ant as well. Now, the EMP missiles are not going to be that useful against the Flak Guns. They don't actually use power, but they will be useful in disabling other systems. Namely, what I would like the Fire Ant to focus on is the thrusters. Let's take away its ability to keep, pa uh, keep pace with the Scarab. The Scarab has its attention, though. And that's exactly what we want. I'm noticing a lot more uh, ships now with multiple weapon systems. Though maybe it's time for the Scarab to add something new to its arsenal, not just ion weapons. That is definitely an option. Uh, once you've gotten through there, go ahead and pop the reactor. Uh, it has multiple bridges, so we'll just go for the reactor instead of anything else. There we are. We can already see there's flames going on in the thrusters and in the... Uh, storage room and the fire is spreading it won't be the thing that destroys the ship though we will be but there we go not too bad at all 
nice, nice hello there. How is uh, the Dapper 2 doing? There we go, it finally, finally jumped. All right, let's also get down there then. And oh, actually, uh, with the Hercules already here, we can simply check and see what we can get. Okay, level eight. There we go. Fame limit 840. I approve! Oh, finally, we're going to be able to get some decent, uh, decent crew onto these ships. And we've already managed to complete one of them. Uh, deliveries, don't need those, but we will grab the exploration missions. And there we are, an extra 25 fame. Can we, ha we can actually hire quite a few people. Very well. Let's get an extra seven crew. Oh, this is marvelous. Uh, that being said, you know, the crew requirements, well, actually they're still only going up by five each. So yeah, 25 is a, an extra uh, extra uh, five crew, just straight up. That's pretty, pretty solid. All things said and done. Now, unfortunately I've got these quests up on the, the screen. Uh, I'll probably deal with that before we, uh, before we uh, rejoin for the next episode. But I think one more victory battle before we wrap this episode up. It's gonna have to be a little bit of a shorter one today. In fact, if this ends up being shorter, considering I have to condense a nine hour stream into it, we'll see how that goes. But uh, it is, of course, 5th of November, and uh, you know, Britlandia, remember, remember, 5th of November, it's, uh, I've got, I've got a, an effigy burning to attend. Uh, and also, mostly the fireworks. Uh, right, let's see. Uh, really, Fire Ant? Really? This is this is going to be your victory victory combat before we leave. But instead, you get stuck on an asteroid. Now you've you've stuck to the scarab as well, scoundrel. All right. Let's see what we got. Ooh, ooh. Now this is an interesting diagonal ship. This is a very interesting. So you're using an ion beam straight down there and nukes. Hmm. All right. Going to be uh, a bit of an interesting ride, this one, but let's uh, get the party started then. Just pop through the nukes and the ion beam if you can, or the reactor, indeed, if that's an option. Uh, Fire Ant, definitely want you nuking, uh, sorry, uh, EMPing all of these if you can, please and thank you. You're fairly low on the EMP zone, I'm going to be honest. Let's keep that up. Uh, going to want you to back off a lot and same for the scarab though ultimately you're all moving more or less at the same speed you've got the same weapons so you're all trying to keep the same distance more or less looks at like the fire ant may in fact be out of well it's got one more missile system are you not getting involved hmm i'm starting to feel that unfortunately I'm going to have to bring the scarab in a little bit closer than I've previously had it moving because it doesn't always get close enough. So let's set a new uh, engage distance. Set attack defaults, there we go. You can scooch in and start melting through. Though honestly at this point you can just go through the engine if you want. I should have been on the ball a little bit more with that. There we go, and all the way down, straight to the reactor. The moment you can get through all of these nukes. I wonder what would happen if that nuke launched. Uh, if you want to go for that, uh, it might be a little bit more of a tricky one there. Uh, go ahead, activate your boosters, get back a bit. We're counter-sniping counter their ion. Are we going to be able to get through all of the layers of shield in time, though? I don't think we will. I think I think it will win that fight, ultimately. It'd be a lot easier for me to just pop through one nuke at a time, even if it can catch up. It's still only fighting me with a relatively weaker... Uh, a, a weaker ion setup. There we are, and now clean your shot to the reactor. And pop, there we go. Fame level up, noteworthy. Fantastic. And the fire I'm just left behind. He's like, oh, sorry. Couldn't couldn't join in. No no, no more ammo. All right, let's get you all down. Oh, you haven't got enough uh, Hyperium. My bad. I should have reloaded you. Uh, thankfully, though, we've got some Hyperium right here. We'll send the Scarab down, though. It should have enough to make it the trip. There we are. But that is, in fact, going to be it for today's episode, I think. Let me know in the comments what you think about the redesigned 
ships. Oh, well, that's not going to be enough harpoon, is it? Uh, that being said, you don't actually need that much, so uh, we might we might have got enough. Can we get down there with five? Yes, we can. How absolutely marvellous. Uh, it's good to, to have a small ship. Very low fuel cost, but... Uh, Again, let me know what you think about the redesign of our ships, especially the paint on the Hercules and, indeed, on the Fire Ant as well. I tried to keep the uh, the red theme going and uh, a little, little play around there, a little skull on its carapace, if you like. But that is going to be it from me. As always, I look forward to any feedback you might have to offer in the comments below. But until next time, do take care, everyone.